So right now, this equation is in standard form. Standard form just means when you have an equation that's written ax squared plus bx plus c. So if you look at this equation and compare it to this one, it's very similar in vibes. You see that it has a number before the ax, and then you have a number before the x, and then you just have a solitary number by itself. And so you can easily see what the a, b, and the c are in this equation. So on the side of my piece of paper, I just like to write it out, a, b, c. So a would be equal to the two, b is equivalent to the six, and the c would be equal to the negative eight. So now that I know what the a, b, and c are, I wanna put this in vertex form. For any one of you who don't know what a vertex is, if you have a graph, and it looks like this, it's called a parabola. You get this graph, it's either an upward facing smiley face or a upside down sad face. You get this graph anytime you have an x squared in an equation. The vertex of this parabola is either the lowest point when you have an upward facing parabola or it's the highest point on the graph when you have um, an upside down parabola or one that I call a sad face. So the vertex literally just is a point, x comma y. It's a point, x comma y. So if you're starting with the standard form, which we're starting with, and we wanna put that in vertex form, the first thing we have to do is we have to get the vertex or we have to get that x, y point. So how do we use this standard equation to get an x and a y, because that's our goal. Well, we have an equation and it's x is equal to the opposite of b over 2a. This is the equation that you use when you're trying to find the x when you have the standard form of an equation. And we do have the standard form right here. So because we already created this box, it's gonna be very easy to fill in this equation. x is gonna be equal to the opposite of b, so b is equal to 6, the opposite of positive 6 is negative 6, over 2 times a, a is going to be 2, so it's going to be negative 6 divided by 2 times 2. So it will be negative 6 times 2 times 2, which is 4, so negative 6 divided by 4, which is equal to negative 1.5. So again, this equation is for x. We just found that x of the parabola of the vertex is negative 1.5. So now we have negative 1.5, and now we're starting to have this point for the vertex. In order to put it in vertex form, we need to have a vertex. In order to have a vertex, we need to have a point. So we now have the x of that point. Now we just have to figure out how to get that y of the point. So. How do we go back to using this equation, the standard form equation, and how do we use that standard form equation in order to figure out a y? Well, it's very simple. I'm gonna rewrite that equation down here so we have some room. f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 6x minus eight. <clears throat> Anytime you see f of x, that f of x is the same thing as saying y is equal to 2x plus 6x minus 8. So instead of saying f of x, you can simply just say y. And that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for what y is equal to. So y is equal to 2x squared plus 6x minus 8. We already know what the x is equal to. So if we just plug in negative 1.5 every time we see an x, we can figure out what y is equal to. So let's go ahead and do that. 2 times negative 1.5 squared plus 6 times negative 1.5 minus 8. And that is going to be equal to y. So let's go ahead and solve this. Negative 1.5, we're going to take care of the square. So negative 1.5 times negative 1.5. When you look at negative 1.5 times negative 1.5, that's equal to 2.25. So we're gonna bring that down and we're gonna bring down the entire equation. Now, I don't care how old you get, I will always encourage all of my students, whether you're in elementary school or all the way in college, 
to always do one step at a time so that you can always retrace your steps if you make a mistake. Trying to do too many steps in one row, if you end up with the wrong answer, you'll never be able to identify where you made your mistake. So one step at a time, no mistakes. So now that we have negative 1.5 squared, which is equal to 2.25, we can go ahead and continue. So now 2 times 2.25 is 4.5. And again, we're going to bring down the rest of the equation, minus 8. And then we're going to go ahead and do 6 times negative 1.5, which is negative 9. So now we have 4.5 minus 9 minus 8. And so now it's 4.5 minus 17. And so now 4.5 minus 17 is negative 12.5. So we have y is equal to negative 12.5. Look at that. We now have x, which is negative 1.5. And we have the y, which is negative 12.5. So we now have what we can call a vertex. We have identified the vertex as negative 1.5 and negative 12.5. That is the point in which the vertex is either going to be at its lowest point, I'm assuming, and that is going to be our vertex. This is our point. Again, we were trying to go from standard form, which was up here, in all the purple, we were trying to go from a standard form equation to a vertex form equation. In order to go from standard form to vertex form, we have to say, okay, well, what is the vertex? What is that x, y point? And we were able to go ahead and find it. Now that we were able to go ahead and find that x, y point, now let's start translating. It's literally going from one language to another. First, we spoke standard form language, now let's go ahead and speak um, vertex form language. So what is vertex form? So on your piece of paper, I want you to go ahead and write vertex form. And vertex form is f of x is equal to a x minus h squared plus k. All right, so now we're starting to see variables or letters that are different from what we had in our standard form. Standard form, we just had a, b, and c. Here we have A, we have X, we have H, and we have K. We're not going to allow the additional letters to confuse us. We're not going to allow them to throw us off. But I am going to show you something. When we were finding the vertex, we were calling it X, Y, because technically the vertex is a point and every point is X, Y. But when you're talking about vertex form, and specifically when you're talking about the vertex, it's usually H, comma, K. So whatever your x, y point was, negative 1.5, negative 12.5, they now represent h and they represent the k. That's just the way that it is. In vertex form, when you're talking about the vertex, you just speak of it in terms of h and k. So the very same numbers, but we're going to call this negative 1.5 the h and negative 12.5 we're going to call k. That's just some outside information that you just have to memorize and you just have to know so that you can use it. So when you're filling in vertex form, the three pieces that you only need to fill out, you need to figure out what the A is equal to, and then you have to put in H, and you have to put in the K. So because we were just trying to go from this equation, the standard form, to vertex form, we already know what A is equal to. A is equal to two. So we already have a piece of this equation that we're trying to figure out. f of x is equal to 2. I feel accomplished even though we still have a lot to do, but that was very simple. Just translating from one equation into another. Then we're going to go ahead and bring down the x. And now it's saying the opposite of h. So right now h is negative 1.5. So the opposite of negative 1.5 would be positive 1.5 squared. And then it's saying plus k. In this case, plus negative 12.5. So it's the same as saying minus 12.5. Anytime you're adding a negative number, it's the same as just subtracting that negative number. For example, if you owe your friend ten dollars if someone says okay you're in the negative ten and you say okay well how much is that 
and I, I already owe this person $20, you have to add that negative $10 to how much you already owe them. So you would take the $20 that you're already in the negative, negative 20, and you would actually add the negative 10. So it's as if you're taking negative 20 minus 10, which would be you now owe them or you're now in the negative $30. So adding a negative is the same as just subtracting that negative. And so we're just going to add negative 12.5 by just keeping it in its negative form, negative 12.5. And so look at that. We now have an equation in vertex form. We went from standard form to vertex form. It's like going from English to Spanish or from Spanish to French. We just have to understand like the language and then just be able to translate it. And I know this may have been a complicated process, but it actually excited me tonight and I just wanted to go ahead and share it with you. So if you ever have a problem like this, just say, Miss Amber, I need help with this type of problem and then maybe I can help you again because these are the type of problems that excite me and these are the type of problems that I love. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of random. It's kind of different than what I've been posting before, but if you like it, please give me a thumbs up, follow, and subscribe.